In this video, you'll find out what the James Webb Telescope is, why it's better than Hubble, where it flies, and finally, what or who it will look for. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Webb's predecessor, the Hubble Telescope, was launched into orbit back in 1990. Many of the viewers were not even born then. No one imagined back then that this tool would work for as long as 30 years and even more. But all predictions aside, it was obvious that in the future, it would need a worthy, more perfect substitute. The idea for a new space telescope project came about in 1996. Initially, the launch was scheduled for 2007, and the initial project budget was about $0.5 billion. But the design and construction of the telescope turned into a whole epic worthy of a full-length drama movie. The first segment of the mirror was installed on the telescope as late as the end of 2015, and the main mirror was completely assembled only in February 2016. A whole generation has grown in the course of this 25-year-long project, and the telescope's launch was postponed 17 times. Over the years, the project's budget has grown to almost $10 billion. What is this incredibly expensive tool? James Webb is a quite large structure compared to other modern space telescopes. Its most impressive part is the sun shield, which is 20 meters long and 7 meters wide. This is equivalent to a tennis court. By comparison, the Hubble telescope is 13.3 meters long and 4.3 meters in diameter without solar panels. The new telescope's mirror looks no less impressive. Its diameter is 6.5 meters. This is almost three times larger than that of Hubble, which has a mirror with a diameter of 2.4 meters. In terms of weight, Webb also significantly outperforms Hubble, but the other way around. The Webb telescope weighs 6.2 tons. That's a lot but the much smaller Hubble weighs a whopping 11 tons. The challenge for the engineers was to keep the telescope as light as possible so that it could be delivered to its destination. The Webb telescope is equipped with a whole set of devices for space exploration. The basic tools are near-infrared camera, device for operating the middle infrared range, near-infrared spectrograph, high precision aiming sensor, an imaging device in the near-infrared range, and a slitless spectrograph. The very features of the telescope are intriguing. The way it's designed and the sheer amount of work that has been put into this is breathtaking and shows the power of human genius. If the purpose of the mirror is more or less clear to everyone, but some might wonder as to the purpose of its largest part. Its role is to protect the telescope from sun rays. A special polymer film was used to manufacture the shield, covered with a thin layer of aluminum on one side and metallic silicon on the other. Vacuum will fill the space between the layers of the heat shield. These interlayers make it difficult to transfer heat to the telescope's core. Such multi-layer protection is necessary to maintain an extremely low temperature of minus 220 degrees Celsius in ultra-sensitive matrices. Without this, the telescope will be blinded by the infrared glow reflected off its own details, rendering the light of distant objects almost unseeable. The mirror consists of 18 hexagonal beryllium segments. This beautiful yellow color of each segment comes from nothing more than the purest gold. Gold plating ensures the best reflection of light in the infrared range. It will effectively reflect infrared radiation with a wavelength of 0.6 to 28.5 micrometers. With only 100 nanometers, its gold layer is unusually thin, and the total weight of the coating is only 48.25 grams. A secondary convex mirror is installed on a special mount in front of a set of 18 segments of the main mirror. Radiation reflected from the main one will focus on it. In turn, this most valuable image will be converted into digital data 
and analyzed by onboard scientific equipment. The James Webb Telescope is a triumph of technological thought, to say the least. It is the most difficult and most expensive project in the history of astronomy, with a very long, difficult, and very dramatic past. And now, finally, the project is one step away from its peak. All of us, with bated breath, will follow the launch and flight of the device to its destination. After the launch, the device will fly into a halo orbit at the L2 Lagrange point of the Sun-Earth system. The Lagrange point is a special place where the gravity of two neighboring bodies balance each other out. In 1772, mathematician Josu Louis Lagrange calculated in his study the problem of three bodies that the Earth's gravitational field should neutralize the gravitational pull of the largest object in the solar system, the Sun, in five regions of space. In fact, these five areas are places in our solar system where gravity virtually doesn't work due to the equal force of attraction from several cosmic bodies. Webb will head to one of these points, namely L2. This means that unlike Hubble, the new telescope won't orbit the Earth or even hover in geostationary orbit. Instead, Webb will orbit the Sun in sync with our planets. The distance from the telescope to Earth will reach 1.5 million kilometers. Such a long distance means there won't be any way to upgrade or renovate it, as was possible with Hubble. Therefore, the entire concept of James Webb is about exceptional, top-notch reliability. The super-sensitive Webb mirror will target objects in our solar system as well as the most distant regions of the visible universe. This golden eye will unravel new secrets of space. Webb will study the watery worlds of the solar system, Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus. The near-infrared near-cam camera will be able to obtain high-resolution images of Europa to study its surface and find regions with geysers and high geological activity. The composition of the recorded geysers will be analyzed using NIRSPEC and MIRI instruments, a device operating in the mid-IR range. The data obtained from these studies will also be used in exploring Europa with the Europa Clipper probe. As for Enceladus, it won't be possible to obtain high-resolution images, but the telescope's capabilities will be enough to analyze the molecular composition of its geysers. It's also planned to observe small bodies of the solar system, such as Ceres, Pallas, the asteroid Ryugu, trans-Neptunian objects, centaurs, and several comets. But Webb's main goal lies outside our solar system. It has to reveal the light of the first stars and galaxies that appeared after the Big Bang. The fact is that the equipment installed on the new telescope will allow us to see 800 million light years farther than Hubble, which is a record in its time. This means that we'll be able to see the way the universe was just 100 million years after the Big Bang. The results can dramatically change the way we see the universe. NASA also officially announced that the list of priority objects for the study will include 17 of the 20 protoplanetary disks closest to our system. Their images were obtained in 2018 by the Alma Radio Telescope Complex in the Atacama Desert in Chile. Webb will measure the spectra of protoplanetary disks to give scientists an idea of their chemical composition. This way, we can establish the presence of water in a potentially habitable zone, where other conditions are suitable for the emergence of life. Finally, the equipment installed on the James Webb Telescope will allow us to identify exoplanets lying 12 astronomical units away from their stars at a distance of up to 15 light years from us. Overall, it will be possible to observe the planets located near dozens of stars neighboring our sun. Moreover, Webb will be able to see not only the planets themselves, but their satellites as well. The telescope is expected to last 5 to 10 years. This is more than enough for many amazing discoveries. Humanity can expect a revolution in the study of exoplanets, and perhaps not even one.